Gulf of Alaska Scientifically Explained The beauty of nature in the Gulf of Alaska tells a fascinating story. With its uneven mix of mountain, forest, and tidewater glaciers, the Gulf of Alaska is the meeting point of two oceans, but they never mix. Why on earth does it happen? We're sure that there is no invisible wall inside, and water is water. What could interfere with its mixing? That's exactly what we'll find out in today's video, the scientific reason for this rare occurrence. Hello and welcome to The Juicy Truth. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. Without further ado, let's start. Why oceans do not mix? The thing is that water can also have different qualities. The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are made up of different chemicals and have different salinity levels, among other differences. By looking at their colors, you can tell they are different. The borders between the two bodies of water with different physical and biological characteristics are known as ocean clines. What are haloclines? Borders between waters with different salinity are the most spectacular. And this is what we see when the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet. This was discovered by the famous explorer Jacques Cousteau while he was deep diving in the Strait of Gibraltar. The layers of water with varying salinity appeared to be separated by a transparent film, and every layer had its own species of plants and animals. When one ocean or sea is at least five times saltier than the other, haloclines develop. You can create a halocline at home if you pour some seawater or colored salty water into a glass and then add some fresh water on top of it. The only difference between your halocline and ocean haloclines is that yours will be horizontal. If you remember a few basic physics principles, you could argue that a denser liquid should eventually end up lower and a less dense liquid higher. If this were true, the border between the two oceans would be horizontal rather than vertical and the difference in salinity would become less noticeable as they got closer to each other. Halocline explanation. So why isn't it happening here? To begin with, the density difference between the two oceans is not large enough for one to sink and the other to rise, but it's enough to keep them apart. Inertia is yet another reason. The Coriolis force, one of the inertial forces, influences objects when they move in the system of axes, which in turn moves to. Simply put, the Earth is moving and all moving objects on it will be acted upon by Coriolis force if they deviate from their path. As a result, objects on the Earth's surface deviate clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere and counterclockwise in the Southern Hemisphere. However, the Earth moves slowly. A planet takes a full day to complete a full circle around its axis. As a result, the Coriolis effect is only visible in long time intervals with cyclones and ocean flows. This is why the flow directions in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans differ. It also prevents them from mixing. Another significant difference between the water and the two oceans is the strength of the molecules' connections or surface tensile strength. Matter molecules cling to each other because of this strength. The two oceans have completely different surface tensile strengths, and they also cannot mix. Maybe they could gradually start mixing with time, but because their flows are in opposite directions, they simply don't have the time. We think both oceans are just water, but their separate molecules only meet for a brief moment before being carried away by the ocean flow. Other types of clines. You'll be surprised to know that the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are not the only ones that don't get along. But there are many places on Earth where water from two seas or rivers does not mix. There are also thermoclines that separate water of different temperatures, such as the warm Gulf Stream and a much colder North Atlantic Ocean. Chemoclines are the most incredible. These are water boundaries with distinct microclimates and chemical compositions. The Sargasso Sea is the world's largest and most well-known chemocline. It's a sea within the Atlantic Ocean with no shores, but you can't help but notice it. Let's take a look at some of the world's other spectacular clines. The North and Baltic Seas. These two seas meet near Skage in Denmark. The water in them does not mix because of their different density. Sometimes you can see the waves of the two seas clash into each other, making foam and yet their water mixes gradually. That's why the Baltic Sea is slightly saline. If there had been no water coming to it from the North Sea, it would have been a huge freshwater lake. The next one is the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. 
They meet at the Strait of Gibraltar and have different densities and salinity, so their water does not mix too. Some other examples include the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean, the Suriname River and the Atlantic Ocean, the Uruguay River and its afflux, Moselle and Rhine Rivers, among many others. So next time somebody shares a really cool photo of the place where two oceans meet, feel free to let them know the science behind the phenomenon. After all, in this internet age, nothing spreads faster than misinformation. What are your thoughts on the video? Let us know in the comments. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're grateful for your time. We'll be back soon.